Hello everyone, I am Sukanya Rana and welcome to uh, Street Theory Initiative, your daily dose for UPSC preparation. Now, today we're going to talk about day 4 and the targets that you had to cover for day 4 were related to your judiciary. Now, first we had to cover Supreme Court, the idea of judicial review, PIL and uh, judicial activism. So these are basic four topics and I think all these topics are very important, especially I think uh, PIL and uh, judicial activism are very important from your current perspective. So I hope you've covered these idea, you've uh, collected set of examples, uh, especially the Supreme Court judgments with respect to PIL and judi judicial activism. So let us look at the very first question and uh, again I hope you've attempted these questions, you've written your answers and now you're going to cross check whether uh, you've covered the right ideas. So the first question is talking about uh, uh, judicial review, judicial activism and the question is, is it possible to distinguish between judicial review and judicial activism in India? Now, understand this question is not asking you to distinguish between these two ideas. So, uh, from a previous discussion, remember I told you whenever you have to distinguish between two ideas, you draw a table and uh, draw a, a parallel or difference between these two ideas. This question is not that. This is asking you whether is it possible or not to distinguish these two ideas. So, this is a completely different tone that you have to cover in your body. Second question that is there in your uh, this particular idea is has the judiciary drifted or shifted towards the idea of judicial activism? So you have to talk about the general trend of judiciary whether it has uh, drifted towards the idea of judicial activism or not. So uh, your introduction will obviously cover the basic two ideas that are there in the question. So there are two ideas of judicial review and judicial activism. So define both of these concepts. With respect to your judicial review, you can add the constitutional origin as well. And with respect to your constitutional, uh, with respect to your judicial activism, you can talk about some Supreme Court ruling which has uh, led to the idea of judicial activism. Now you can bring in some cases here, like you can bring in the case of Keshav Nanda Bharti case that was also kind of judicial activism. So, uh, talk about these ideas, define these ideas and I think that is a, a good introduction that you can give to this particular question, right? So, again, um, uh, the question is not ba basically what is the difference between them. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to define that first question into three parts. The question was whether it is, uh, whether one can distinguish between it or not. Right. Uh, so first we're going to talk about what is the sense of similarity between them. So that is the first thing that we're going to talk about how judicial review and judicial activism are somewhat similar. The basic idea behind them is somewhat uh, similar. In fact, judicial activism has its origin from the idea of judicial review. So you can talk about the sense of similarity in this particular portion. Cover this in short. Then what you're going to talk about it that uh, even though they might sound similar, but they are not. There is a lot of basic difference between them. So you, then what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the differences between two ideas, right? So first we covered the idea of similarity, then we covered the idea of differences, and then we're going to write why the idea of uh, marking the difference between two is very important, right? So we're going to cover this idea of uh, why the distinguishing, uh, distinguishing factor between judicial review and judicial activism is very important. All right. So three portions that you're going to cover with respect to your first portion of the question. Then we're going to tackle the second question, which is, is Indian judiciary shifting towards judicial activism? Right. So uh, you're going to talk about how, uh, number one, there's a general trend of shift toward activism. Right. So that pro kind of argument you're going to cover in this particular heading, uh, getting more examples. I think uh, the more and more Supreme Court cases and judgments you'll include in this particular answer, you'll fetch more and more marks. Right. So judicial shift towards activism, you're going to talk about here. 
and then what you're going to talk about is what are the concerns with respect to this judicial shift all right so there are two ideas that you're going to cover in uh, whether indian judiciary is shifting towards activism or not you can talk about how there has been a shift towards activism if you want you can also uh, talk about few points where you say that it's not a complete shift but it is a gradual shift like it's it's uh, positioned where it is needed like in areas of say environment in areas of say some social issues so wherever it's needed it's uh, showing activism but Um, you can uh, say your argument that it is not something that judiciary has completely shifted towards so that kind of position you can uh, write in your first portion then you can talk about concerns and in concerns you can uh, get in some examples of judicial overreach like how the idea of judicial activism has today shifted into the idea of judicial overreach use the examples of liquor ban the national anthem example so there are a couple of examples that you can bring in this particular question and finally what you're going to do is conclude your answer and your way forward here is going to have a balanced approach balanced approach between how we require both the idea of judicial review and judicial activism to work together and provide the right kind of checks and uh, balances that are required in a parliamentary democracy right and uh, also at that angle of how uh, activism should not be taken for granted and it should prevent the idea of uh, judicial overreach so that kind of uh, complete balanced approach you can apply in your conclusion and i think this is a good structure with respect to this particular answer if you have any other points do mention it in the comment section uh, other people can also benefit out of it so i think that's it for this question let us look at the second question of the day now the second question of the day is also talking about a very common and in fact it's a very much uh, uh topic that has been in news which which is talking about your uh, appointment of judges in supreme court so this has been in news i think for a very long time uh when uh, when we we can bring in the topic of uh, the ngac bill we can talk about collegium here every aspect can be covered in this particular question so basic key points here is uh how appointment of judges so appointment of judges in supreme court still remains a controversial issue so you have to talk about the various aspects with respect to the idea of appointment of judges so the very first point here with respect to introduction which you're going to talk about is uh, first you're going to give me a brief introduction about uh, what is this tish- issue with respect to appointment of judges so you can give a brief background about ngac you can gi- give a brief background about, uh, around the collegium system so this will ensure that i'm able to get a basic understanding of uh, what is this idea of appointment right so your introduction is going to cover that particular portion then what you're going to do is you're going to talk about in your body first some of the historical development so start from the uh, judges cases like you can talk about first second and third judges cases and uh, recent ngac development you can talk about how and that can be covered in short like use block diagrams here you don't have to write really long historical development uh, this is basically again building up the idea of uh, how this is a controversial issue right so this will provide this background to it uh, again um, the second portion that we're going to talk about is the controversy that is related to appointment of uh, judges so we're going to talk about what government take is here so uh, there is controversy so controversy is between two ideas so you're going to lay down both the ideas you're going to talk about the government take on this particular issue then you're going to also talk about the supreme court position on this particular issue and how this clash has uh, been sustaining this very controversy for such a long time period so this is a very important portion in your answer and it should be there it should be clearly marked the headings should be properly written then what we're going to talk about next is the need of reforms in judiciary we've talked about the idea of controversy we've talked about why it still remains but then we're going to include one angle of uh, the reforms that are required in judiciary with respect to appointment like this is a very uh, close system 
there's a lot of corruption there's a lot of nepotism that is associated with it so reforms are obviously necessary in judiciary so mention these ideas why these reforms are necessary and why this controversial issue of appointment should be resolved as soon as possible right so bring in those points because recently there was a news when uh, judiciary uh, when your supreme court had asked uh, uh, your government about the appointment of uh, few judges and uh, or, or which was done by collegium and it was not passed by the government so this kind of intro uh, controversy has been sustaining for a really long time period and it's affecting the work culture the efficiency of judiciary so include those points here and finally what you can conclude is uh, you can give me a, break, a way forward of how the appointment system of ng of uh, uh, judiciary should be like you can support the idea of ngac or you can give in some reforms that can be included in ngac which would be acceptable to the supreme court as well another thing that you can do here is you can add the international element like you can talk about how judges are appointed in uh, uk how they are appointed in usa and this will add the comparison of the constitutional or the judicial features right so that concludes your uh, second question of the day and again i think uh, if you think you can add some more angle if you think you can add some examples if you think you can add some uh, court cases which were missed by me please mention in the comment section let us know let the other aspirants as well know and uh, thank you for watching the video and this concludes our uh, uh, questions of the day thank you so much subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update from civil state